You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Broadcasting from the Blanchestan Center, this is Phoenix FM. This is 92.5 Phoenix FM, community radio for Dublin 15. Hey everybody, it's JB Jeremy Borash and you are listening to Daryl O'Connor on the... Welcome to the Wrestling Rewind. The only wrestling podcast by fans who don't hate wrestling. Hey everybody, you are listening to Phoenix 92.5 FM. It is Tuesday, which means you're listening to the Wrestling Rewind Show 97. My name is Daryl Connor, and I'm joined on the line by the one, the only, undefeated, 1-0, Martin Herdy. How are things, Martin? How are you doing, man? Not a bother, Daryl. How's yourself? Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Punk still hasn't responded. How many weeks is this? We need to get like a Fox News counter. Uh, we're, counting just, it, we're counting it in the months now we're in into the months, the months now. now you know oh man yeah i think you're gonna have to wait until he finishes with hangman yeah yeah i'm, I'm sure who knows who will have lined up next but i have no doubt i'm uh, i'm on the list somewhere oh, you have like to that be. uh like that scene in father ted where they're telling ted oh yeah you were the first fellow we had on the list and he looks up and there's a big name of 40 priests <laughs> Well, look, we'll, we'll we'll give him the we'll give him the fair dues and be like, right, you finish Hangman, and then he has to respond. But this week, we're going to take a break from our WCW timeline because uh, we have our first interview uh, in a while. Actually, it's I think the last get or the last guest we had on was James. So, uh, Martin, I'm gonna I want to give the reins over to you, and you can introduce and kind of lead the show from here because you and you and our guests go way back. So, take it away, sir. We do. I'm, I'm particularly pleased to, to be able to introduce our guest tonight, a veteran of the Irish wrestling scene, a personal friend and mentor, Billy Bedlam. Billy, how are you, man? It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to see you, Dara. Thanks for, for very much for inviting me on. Uh, yeah, you're right. We, we do go way back. I wouldn't, I never quite see myself as a veteran of anything, to be honest with you, but I suppose I'm around a, a, bit, a, bit of, bit, a bit of time right now. But yeah, it's great to see you. We do go back a little bit. Uh, well, six, six or seven years at this point to uh, CCW days, but yeah, always good to talk to my friend. Well, I have to say, ever since I saw you, what was it? You broke a hip in the ring and were carried out and still sat at the edge of the thing watching how the show was going. I was like, that ever since then, I've considered you a veteran. Well, what happened was I, bro- I broke my hip in a kid's show in a matinee, and we were doing a double show, and I was driven to the hospital. And we were, it was in Limerick and we were at Limerick at University Hospital and I was sta- sitting there next to a woman who would be there. She was in her 80s and she'd be there for seven hours and she had a, a broken wrist. I was looking around, I was like, screw this. No, she, not too sure, can I swear or not, by the way? No, um, I can't. <laughs> now, yeah, well, then again, I, I saved this. Yeah, bang, bang. Uh, well, I said, flip this. And I went um, I went to the off license instead of going to the emergency room and I got the ke- a, a, a slab of Heineken, a slab of Bulmers. And uh, I dragged myself into a taxi, dragged myself into the, back in, through the back door. Ricky Combo seen me coming. He was like, look at this. And I was like, so, <laughs> come on. And I just got there as Raven Creed, my partner at the time, was going out through the curtain. So I grabbed the... Jemison grabbed a chair as a crutch and got to ringside to, to see the in hindsight it wasn't a good idea but it's a bit of a laugh to tell the story but uh yeah well yeah yeah I was quite sorry it was quite a bit eventful evening I okay. think I think that's a Fair I think play. that's a veteran in anyone's book absolutely I'd say it's uh I, I think you made the right you know I'm not going to condone it but in my personal opinion I think you made the right decision <laughs> I changed nothing. Fair <laughs> I changed nothing that's fair so look you know obviously as Martin said you're a you are a veteran in the Irish wrestling community. Let's say you're from Cork. You've you've mm. been in the ring. You've been in several rest of promotions. You've ran your own rest of promotion in Phoenix Wrestling. Uh, where do you want to start? Because there's some again. I I'm new to this uh, Irish independent wrestling. Is let's start there then. Uh, so yeah, let's start with Phoenix Wrestling. Like, what made you what made you want to start wrestling promotion? Um, it was kind of by default, really. Right? It was because. The absolute chaos that was done in Cork uh, in, in CCW and 
myself and, and a few other senior heads were chatting about it for a while, thinking about doing our own thing, kind of doing a splinter group, really. Because right. we kind of, there was a lot going on behind the scenes. It was, I won't go into a note, there's other podcasts that can, can shoot, shoot dirt to people. But look, mm-hmm. it was a bit of a mess. You know, you know, you know yourself, Martin, you were kind of around it. Um, and a lot of people had a bad taste in the They wanted something new and they wanted some, something with a bit of leadership, I think, and something a bit, a bit fresh ideas. So myself and Marion Armstrong and kind of Steve Stavage got together and went, right, are we going to do this or what? And then there was one particular night where um, we were kind of berated like children by the old promoter at, at a kind of a press conference, mm. uh, kind of as a kind of a gimmick. And we're like, he dared us to do it. And I was like, all right, that's all I need. Because I, I was the kind of one pushing it behind the scenes. I'm like, come on, let's do this. Because uh, I remember Marion Armstrong was always the one who was like, uh, didn't want to kill CCW, but I was like, no it'll be a mercy killing. Come on, let's do it. So anyway, we, we kind of did it, but it was something I wanted to do anyway, because I always like to um, push the envelope of creativity, let's say, right? Right. So four years ago, this July, um, we started it and we have our fourth year anniversary show coming up actually in the Kino in a couple of weeks time with Scotty Too Hottie as our special guest. Come on, I said. Oh, that, that's oh. a big, that's a big, that's a big coup for us, I think. Uh, so yeah, so it's been a, it's an amazing journey, some ups and downs, a lot of downs as well over COVID. Yeah, we had to close my gym in, um, in Cork, move to Limerick, because uh, it just wasn't sustainable with the money that we, I was paying in rent every month, 1,500 right. quid. Do you know what I mean? The landlords would, like everyone at the start was like, oh yeah, rent reduction here, rent reduction there. The cold face of it, there's no rent reduction. The bills had to be paid. I, was, I wasn't entitled to get any money because I work full-time elsewhere. Right. But um, way more highs than lows, right? Um, we, we got back at it. We've done about five or six shows. Just coming off the back of selling out another show in the Circus Factory in Cork. Wow. Um, and I have, a, I have, a, I have, a, I have a next generation gym show tomorrow in Limerick. I'll be heading off at half eight in the morning down there. Um, then for, for, for the kind of the, the, the next people who are coming through Phoenix Wrestling, do you know what I mean? The kind of the trainees that are not re- quite ready for show shows, but they, they need experience. So we, that's what we do. We kind of put on gym shows or next generation shows. There's a lot going on. Uh, I literally just I'm coming from a Fight Factory show there where I was helping out tonight as well where we had Butch Armstrong and Reardon O'Connor from Phoenix Wrestling wrestling on the shows it's it's a never ending kind of um, merry-go-round but it's so enjoyable that uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't swap it for anything else you know unreal so like obviously the the Irish independent wrestling scene is it's not as it's not as like big as people would think because obviously the UK and so that kind of happens. The music scene is very similar. I think there is not an overlap with mm. the music scene and the wrestling scene, you know, in lots of ways. Mm. What what inspired you to actually kind of get into independent wrestling in general? Was it because you wanted to, to go off to be a professional wrestler or was it because you just wanted to have that in Ireland? That's always something that I like to kind of get a read on. I just fell into it, if I'm honest with you. I came, I was living in Dublin and I came back to Cork about eight years ago and I, I love professional wrestling as a fan. I, you know, I was like, as a mark, like we're all fans, like the people yeah. doing podcasts. I, I was I was doing podcasts. I was going to shows. You know, I'm a massive fan. I still am. Mm. Um, if I'm not a fan of wrestling, what the hell am I doing? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. No, I'm a big fan. And I just went some, I heard there was a school on myself and Tom, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Martin, you know, Tom as well, he's a commentator. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just came and went along one day and I got suplexed around the place <laughs> and I, I'm still here eight years later. I was, I was just like, this is the most fun I've ever had. I was literally, this is the most fun I've ever had. And I went on, I, I trained for a bit and I was a commentator for a while for, for Lee for a year until I was kind of ready to kind of get into the ring. And um, yeah, I've never looked back since. And yeah, you're right about the, it's not as mainstream as we'd like it to be. Um, no OTT are selling out national stadiums. There's more wrestling in the national boxing arena than there, than there is boxing at, mm. at, at the moment because yeah. boxing, boxing isn't as... It's a boxing is kind of struggling a little bit, mm. whereas re- wrestling is kind of kind of. I won't say taking over because it's not, but it's doing good numbers. It's doing good business, you know. Um, uh, and we're always getting new fans, and that's the that's the good thing to to, to when you're at, we're at a show and people come up to you and go, "Oh man, it's my first time being here. I don't know what to expect." I'm I'm always coming from it from now on, you know. I mm. have we we've, we've so many new fans since COVID. Um, that are just 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 getting to wrestling as a night out, and that's what I do. I do primarily adult shows, 
um, and people come as a night out and it's experience. People bring their own beer and they, they yeah. get involved and and then they come back and they go, oh, that happened the last time, that's that guy, oh, that's great. <laughs> you know, and then they, they bring their wives and they bring their friends and that's how the community forms, you know. That's true. And that's kind of something that I've even seen that you brought up OTT. Obviously, it's the, the elephant in the room. You know, they're they're the main name in, in oh, yeah. independent wrestling. But a lot of people who actually go to those shows, yeah, obviously you have fans, but I mean, as you said, it's a night out kind of thing. It's more like going to a gig rather than going to yep. a, a yep. wrestling event. You know, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, it, it's a good mix. You have wrestling fans who are there at, just to see a wrestling show. You have people who think who who, who are bringing their friends because they're like, you gotta go, you gotta come see this. It's mighty crack. Mm. Uh, and they're the casual fans, but mm. they're the ones you want to keep coming. Like the wrestling fans will always come. Yeah, they will. Yeah, but, but you're never going to start. And you're never going to. You're not going to fill a stadium with wrestling fans as such. No, no, you, no, know, no, you won't. No, you got to get that casual audience. Yeah, it's the casuals and the the night out and all that kind of stuff. It's it's you know all the people as wrestling fans who kind of drive us mad sometimes, right? But they're the ones that bring in the money. <laughs> yeah, so, fact. So, in terms of uh, so you started off pumping around Bedsy and um, you know you took your suplexes and that, and you thought this is for me. But obviously, the other side of it then is is developing who you are. Mm. So, how, how did you come? How did you become Billy Bedlam? How did that? come about like i don't know how people like uh, everyone has this I, like when you're coming up with a gimmick like everyone has a weird story about how they come up with their, their their name right um my first name was i was going to be mason ace right um and i because i was basing a character off um uh, the casino the mm. movie casino your man i was going to be a gambler i was going to be i got an ace up my sleeve if i was a betting man and i am you'd be betting on fucking mason ace blah blah blah, blah. that was going to be my first that was my first That's a future thing, right? world champion right there. Yeah, but after about two promos, you got nothing else, right? Um, then I kind of, I was going to be an anarchist. Um, do you know, a million things, were, like million stupid ideas. And then um, I was supposed to be a face mm. right before my debut and Lee didn't know what to do with me. Like, to be fair, fair, I was supposed to be this, the Irish, this Irish warrior kind of a thing because I had the Finlay Bedlam gear as it's affectionately known now as. Um and I just, I was watching Con Air and I saw Billy Bedlam and I was like, that's for me. <laughs> so I, I literally uh, took my name for Billy Bedlam out of Con Air and uh, I debuted as a heel instead of a face. Uh, but I still had the Irish gear because I had no time to get anything else. So there's videos of me in yellow boots and a green singlet. Uh, the linchpin, uh, Billy Bedlam Lynch was my original name. And yeah, coming out, coming out to dubstep. From 28 weeks later, there's not a there's not a logical. That's one sentence, and there's no logic in any of that. Like, but uh, that's what that's 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 what I that's how I started. <laughs> anyway. But it obviously got over though. People were how do people respond to it? Like, I think that's something that is always kind of interesting. It's like as a yeah. performer, yeah. Um, what's that like? Like being a wrestler. You know, mm. as you said, if the, if the crowd just dies and they're like, we don't care, like. As a yeah. heel, is it easier to be in a face, or what's your experience? Uh, like? Yeah, you, you, um, you're always probably better off starting as a baby face. But uh, I started as a heel; it's, it's, it's harder. I mean, the, the heel drives the match. Mm. The baby face should be there for the ride, really, at the start. And when you're starting off, I'd always encourage guys that we're training to kind of. Everybody comes into the gym. Oh, I want to be a bad guy. You know, I want to be a bad guy. My character is like the Joker. Is it? What's your name? Luke Hamill? Is it or whatever? Everyone has some rec- I've, the amount of the amount of 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 variations of that can can this battle of coke be a rose no it's a battle of coke come on do a promo um do you it, remember it, that it, there you do you know exactly what i'm talking about but like that's that's it um so i i no, I, I bounced around like that for a couple of months just kind of and i had no clue what i was doing i had no clue. i was trying to let wrestle i was trying to do moves that didn't suit me bear in mind i didn't start wrestling until i was 35 i'm 43 in two weeks and i'm eight years now wrestling i'm still wrestling um, mm-hmm. I, I might rest tomorrow. We'll see. Um, <laughs> um, I that's the, the the joys about booking the card. I was like, I'll see who's there. If I need, if, if I get the itch, I'll get into the ring because this is a gym show. I like, get a bit of fun. That's fair. That's fair. But um, I bounced around for a little bit, maybe a year, and I had I'd no clue how, how to differentiate myself from the pack. How, right. how to just be everyone is it everyone? You know, they're good guys, bad guys, boo yeah, boo yeah. So to be fair, um, we were being trained at the time by a guy called uh, Ricky Combat, right? Who was a kind of, I got on very well with Ricky um, over a period of time. And he gave me advice. He was like, You need to do something different. Everyone's going to be this and everyone's going to be that. So maybe you need to get, uh, you need to get 
a prop or a doll or something, right? Get mm. a doll. And I'm always like, doll, fuck, what am I going to do with a doll? So I was to rack my brains, racking my brains. I was like, going to get a puppet, right? So I got a puppet off the inter- internet. It was a handmade puppet. Uh, it was, I got him out of in eBay. He was made in the 50s. And this was a weird looking puppet. Now, um, I don't have him with me. He's in Limerick. William. I called him William because uh, I'm B- Billy. So there was a kind of a connection there. And I, what I was going to do was I, I got brass knocks and I was going to hide the brass knocks under the puppet. And when the ref grabs the puppet, I have the brass knocks, bang, finish, screw, boom, yeah. And then I started really kind of playing on the bedlam bit. Billy Bedlam, sure, Billy Bedlam has to be nuts. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. just say, oh, he's nuts because his name is Bedlam. You got acting nuts. So I started, instead of trying to do uh, Alberto Del Rio spinning armbar finishes, which I did try and do as my finisher when I first started, because then I realized I can't do that. Uh, a headbutt or brass knocks, you know, that kind of thing, the suit to suit my style yeah so that, that's kind of when i started to get over uh, and i formed a group with, with raven creed and lauren roof from northern ireland um called therapy and that's mm-hmm. when i started to get noticed and that's when i started to get over and the crowd were like oh my god that, he's doing mad things and we did we were doing mad things at that point it became a bit of a sh- bit of um uh uh i won't say attraction but it, be, it became something different on the car therapy right. what did we, we, we wouldn't know what we'd be up to and we'd be making videos and on the beach and all sorts of stuff in the merry-go-rounds with creepy voices over it you mm-hmm. know just to get noticed and, and that's when i suppose we f- i found my niche i found my who i really was a madman and uh, come here, cool. Bezzy, so obviously there's only a, a small number of people i mean relative to the amount of doing it who are able to make a lot of money out of wrestling mm. um now it's unreal the feeling when you're out there but whenever you got say badly injured or you got hurt or, or you had like a, a long run of uh of of shows you know do you ever hit a wall and think jesus maybe this isn't worth it or yeah there was a couple of times to be fair um after i broke my hip i didn't think in the very brief moment afterwards i thought that was it until about five days after it the fear of never wrestling again drove me forward. I okay. literally, lit, literally was like, I, I was nearly paralyzed with the fear. And I got into the ring six weeks after I broke my hip and I won a battle royal for my first and only ever championship. And I shouldn't have been anywhere near the ring. I mean, I shouldn't have been anywhere near the ring for months, but I was so stubborn and stupid that I was like, <laughs> this is my only opportunity to get a championship. Um, well, that's the reason I haven't had one in four years. And, oh, I never, far. and I never got to defend it um, because the company closed. But um, yeah, there, there was that time. And then it was not, like when I when I had my um, retirement match in on my Billy Bedlam's Big Birthday Bash, uh, I had my 40th uh, as a wrestling show, which is good crack, to be fair. I didn't think I would ever wrestle again. I wasn't in a great headspace. I, I was burnt out from work and wrestling and lots of other stuff in my private life. Mm. And I hadn't the appetite for it. I just didn't want to. I didn't. I bear. I was. Somebody was asking me about it. I was like, I don't even want to go through with the match. To be honest with you, I was like, I, I was because I was there with Bruiser and it was real fun. And he's he's a dot and I loved him the bits. And he made it so easy for me. And it was probably my best ever match. It's an awful shame that it wasn't recorded. It's the one show we never recorded because we kind of ran out of money with Phoenix. And that's that's where we were. We were we were busted like. Right. Um. And that at that stage, I was like, uh, I don't think I'd ever wrestle again. And then two months later, I was up in Titanic and Martin, you were there and I was back in the ring. <laughs> I was I was out of shape. I was in bad nick. I was, it wasn't a great match, but you you were there uh, uh, shouting and roaring for Betsy. And I really appreciate that because that, that was a real difficult time in my life um, with wrestling and, and life in general. And I was just up and down. I was all overweight and all that kind of stuff. And, but I got the appetite back um, kind of soon after that. And uh, at, I've never kind of said that I was like, I never said that I was, or even thought that it was going to be anywhere close to finished um, after that, you know? So I, I have a notion that you're the Terry Funk of Irish wrestling, that we'd be having this conversation in 20 years. Forever! <laughs> <laughs> now, there will come a time, there will come a time, um, but it's not anytime soon. Um, it's not anytime soon. I'm doing, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it now more than I ever was. I really won't lie to you. Um, I'm tr- like, I live in Dublin now. So I'm training in the Fight Factory quite a lot. I'm getting private lessons by uh, LJ Cleary. Mm. I'm up, I go up and down to Limerick maybe once every couple of weeks to keep in touch with the boys in the school. But I mean, I'm and I'm 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 wrestling. I'm involved. Uh, I was helping out with Titanic or uh, with, with Factory earlier tonight. I was on their show a couple of weeks ago. Um, 
I'm myself and Butch Armstrong are wrestling for the Titanic Belts in Derry in three weeks' time. Um, so fingers crossed. Um, so I, I've never been better. I've never been in better mental shape. I think for wrestling as I am right now, I absolutely love it. It's interesting as well that like a serious injury, instead of saying, "Oh, this is it," this kind of scared you off. It actually drove you forward. That's very interesting because I, I thought it would have yeah. been the opposite. You know, it's like, uh, w- what was that kind of mindset where you're like, I have to do this or else yeah. I'm never going back. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was fear of never, because I was at a time where I was like, I'm getting old, like I'm getting a bit, I'm getting old to wrestle in, in wrestling terms because mm. it's not, it's not my profession as such, even though sometimes I act like HubSpot is my hobby and wrestling is my, uh, wrestling is my life. But Fair. Um, it was, it was real fear of never doing it again. Well, and, and that's what drove me forward. It was, it was, it was, you know, it was real fear. Even though, even though I was, I was literally going around the walking stick for a few days. Man, well, my hip, but I, I was, I was emotional, spiritual about it. I was, I was like, I, this is not how I go down. This is not the way I'm going to. After all, I've put into this, there was no way. The last time I'm in that ring is the way that I was carried out, and I literally had to be carried out. No way. This is not the end. So, um. Yeah, I, I took, obviously I was, my doctor was telling me to stop. Uh, my family was like, stop. And I was like, well, the more you say stop, the more I'm going to go. So there you go. Might as well just encourage me and go, well done. You know, so. Well, yeah. look, you no, got the, it, it was real fear, I think. To answer you. Well, look, you got the win. That's the main thing. You know, you have a good story to tell. I'm sure that's what, that's what the main thing's all about, right? Well, the only reason I won that is because I couldn't get out over the top rope because my hip was loose. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I think I, I think I was supposed to win that anyway, but it was never a belt. The belt was only put on that at the last two days before right. beforehand, um, because Vic Viper had some injury and he, and he couldn't defend it. Um, but I was always going to be number one contender. I was the Dano um, Dano Manny Battle Royal, but uh, I was I was in bad shape. I shouldn't have done it, but I was selfish. I was selfish and I wanted to do it, but um, yeah, I'd do it again. <laughs> So obviously, when you're when you're booking the you're booking the show, so it's, it's yourself that books Phoenix, right? Or is there a yeah, it is, no, no one man show? So, um, kind of, how does that work? Like, how do you balance out the new talent that comes in? Because obviously, you have a bunch of young fellas that are coming in. You have the the, yeah. the new generation uh, showcase in a couple of days. What's yeah. what's that? Um, what's that balance act like? Is it a kind of case where you're like, oh, you know? These guys are doing well. They need a bit more exposure, and then we have mm. it. Like, talk, talk me through that. Yeah, it, it is a balancing act. I I like to, to book four or five shows in a row, so I sit down with my um my spreadsheets because I've everything locked into how like how much that'll cost and blah blah blah, blah. and I'll book I block book maybe four or five matches or four or five shows in a row with my main storylines first and foremost. Mm. So I know my title pictures well in advance. I kind of know who's my going to be my next two or three champions six months nine months in advance. Sure, you got to be flexible. You got some if somebody gets injured or somebody blah blah blah. Then you got to fix and, and, and mend it. But I kind of like to plan it like that. That's the way I work. I, I do it in advance. Um, I always leave a couple of free slots on shows just to see what happens. And, and as we're coming to the time, if someone is pro- if someone is going well in training or someone's a- approached me, if someone's just approached me, because I get contacted all the time by people. Mm. Um, and I genuinely, right or wrong, I only work with people that I like. Right. That I know. For, for imp- imports aside, no, like, mind you, like I've, I don't know Karen Noir. He's wrestling just at the next show, but I hear good things about him. Um, um, yeah, stuff that I don't know, Sky Duhati, but I'm going to buy, we're going to bring him in because he's a draw. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. generally speaking, I like to look, use the same people over and over, and mm. I like to I like to reward loyalty as well. And people are nice and sound and genuine to me. I'll be nice and sound and genuine to them. If I'm if if you're not in the show because you're not nice and sound and genuine, well, you know why you're not in the show. Um, I'm too old and too long in the two to be playing games with people or playing politics. So. I genuinely just buy like I, I like people and I book the people I like because because they're they're genuine and they're good wrestlers. Mm. So I, I genuinely like to, to 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 mix and match. I have a good pool. I have my own guys. I've got people from Titanic. I have people from Fight Factory, and I've got a couple from Irish School of Wrestling, the OTT side of things. Um, and I I've, I'm in a great place. I can kind of pick and choose anybody I want. I genuinely right. like like to like the likes of Steve Savage, Rare No Connor, but the uh, one night stand, they're always going to be on shows, on my shows. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of pick and choose who I want to see them against over a period of time. And then other people come and go, like Terry Thatcher was away for a bit, now he's back in and stuff like that. So I mean not everyone is going to be on every show, but I like to accommodate people like that. And 
it's the newer people then that are they need to prove that they're good enough, ready, and they're going to be able to handle it. Mm. So like someone like Sam Desham, who's itching to to get on the shows, and I think he's just about ready for for this that's big splash in the keynote. And I can't wait to to push him. Um, so yeah. It's it's a great place to be. It's it's a very rewarding feeling when you're someone's coming back and they're like, oh my god, that was that was so good. Thank you so much. I was like, no, oh, thank you, boy. You deserve it. I just mm-hmm. give you a platform. I didn't go out and hold your hand there. Do you know what I mean? I just put you your name down the sheet. You went out and did it. Um, but it's cool. I mean, I, I'm I'm in a great place of great work relationship with all, everyone in Irish wrestling. So it's a good place to be. To be fair, that's pretty cool. It's like the nexus point of um of Irish wrestling. Lots of ways where you're kind of plugged in and connected in with all these. Mm-hmm pool of talent and it is again as somebody who's not super exposed to this kind of stuff I, by my own ignorance so martin will tell you sure we're stuck in the 90s wcw like uh <laughs> what a place to be i'm telling what you a place that's, to be. That, that's where I've, we are you know i've watched so much of that stuff lately on <laughs> on over lockdowns and stuff and that, i don't really watch the modern product uh, I, go back, I go backwards oh man it's muck um the good thing about COVID was that we had time to look back but you know i i have to respect man like you know it's uh, there is that kind of when it's such a big juggernaut with wrestling in general, mm. dominated by WWE or AEW as it is, kind of, how do you sell the product to someone? How do you kind of be like, look, this is wrestling, or like all that thing on television. If someone never watched wrestling before, and again, we're on Phoenix FM, which is kind of funny, um, who never, who, who've never seen your product before. Exactly, exactly. That's called cross branding right there. Absolutely, who, yeah. Who've never seen your product before, who listen to this, who just want to hear a WCW view or WWE. How would you sell it to the, to the people who've never seen your product before? What would you say about Irish wrestling? Like, Irish wrestling is, is an experience, right? I mean, obviously, you know wrestling for me on the television. We all, everyone knows the old school wrestling. We know the, the attitude there. You know, everyone knows Stone Cold. Everyone knows John Cena. Mm. But if you want to, if you want to sit down for two and a half hours and enjoy in a in in in, a, in, a, in an intimate surrounding with fellow wrestling enthusiasts and bring six cans of beer, maybe eight cans of beer, man, who knows, and enjoy and have a great night enjoying yourself and let yourself go. That's what re- Irish wrestling is all about. It's the quality of wrestling in Ireland, I believe, is better than anywhere else in Europe. I think. The training and the facilities that are in 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 in, in and I'm I'm saying that now and I know the UK is just over there, hmm. but bar but bar NXT UK, there's nothing you can say that will tell me that anything else that the, the standard of OTT isn't be, in the best in Europe. Okay, hmm. take away the imports, you have Irish wrestlers. Okay. And those wrestlers are wrestling in all the promotions in Ireland and they're training people in the wrestling promotions in Ireland. We'll take LJ Cleary for an example. I know I've segued now, I'm not selling it anymore, but um, but that, but that's it. I mean, I think we're I think we're the best the Irish wrestling is not is not to be looked at looked down at anything. Irish wrestling is the is the I think it's the best wrestling in the, in, in Europe. We have people, uh, the, the flagship wrestlers, Becky Lynch, Fionn, uh, Finn, Finn Balor, Jordan Devlin, Seamus for years. They're 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 world class and world world not household names. They're global names from this little this little country we have here. You know, so that's an interesting point, and that's kind of I'm glad you brought that up. It's like the the style of Irish wrestling for people who've never mm-hmm. seen it before. How would you describe that? Would it would it be technical? Would it be kind of cruiserweight? Would it be more along the lines of what Finn Balor does? What exactly can people expect? Or is there like because I had a look at, at some of the at some of the stuff again? I'm not super mm. exposed to it. It seems to be a bit of everything. Because then there's like a hardcore kind of stuff. There's a bit of fun. Like what do you yeah. guys focus on? What is the what is the main push? You there's no main focus. It's a show. Okay. From, like from a tree wing, a tree wing circus. There's a bit for everybody, right? There is a bit for everyone. I just came from a show tonight, as I said, uh, in the Fight Factory, and they're very. We're, we kind of Irish wrestling's product is is generally the same. Uh, in a lot of the cases, the same philosophy is you have your you have your you have your wrestling matches, right? That which is mm. genuine, the best wrestling. I mean, it's just it's just unbelievable. Like that'll be your your kind of mainstay. You've tag team wrestling, which could right. be. It could be anything. If I do a lot of hardcore wrestling on my on my promotion in particular, and I'll tell you about something that I'm launching as a kind of a sister company to Phoenix in 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 in, in August. I'll tell you that about that in a minute. I have a hard I have a hardcore division in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. I have um, Empress Division in Phoenix, which showcases the best of Irish women's wrestling, um, and and imports that as well. But then we have we have we have high concept matches where it's 
it's it's comedy, but it's very high concept comedy. Like I did a I did a, a show there recently where I had Danny Cross from OTT and I had Jay Money who wrestles everywhere um, having a, a fifty for, having a first dates match. I saw that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <You laughs> that was mean? brilliant. Even yeah. the the promo for that alone blew my mind. Like that was brilliant. And we I'd always have one particular match on the card like that. And I'm doing a show on the Kino, Mr. Charlie's um, Multiverse, which the, like a lot of the show is going to be like, what what the hell's going on? You put, mm. you bring you bring the audience on a journey. So, um, it's it's a journey that that whole show. I mean, you 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 from top to bottom, you kind of have to make sure that the card flows properly, and they're they're not all not all the promos in one point, or some of the wrestling is broken up in different segments, so the crowd can kind of go Hoof, mm. and, and sit down and, and enjoy that this part of the show, and then get back up for the main. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. It's an experience. It's an experience like nothing. Before. You can watch a show on TV, a wrestling show on TV, and it's one thing. But to go into it live, completely different ball game. Mm. So I think, Betsy, um, yeah, I mean, any uh, startup business is, is notoriously difficult to keep going, and even more so in wrestling. But mm. I think after four years, you're coming up, and now it's fair to say that sort of Phoenix is one of the kind of recognized um, wrestling promotions in Ireland. Mm. And it's doing so well, and I'm glad to say that we uh, we have a bit of an exclusive on this. That Phoenix is is branching out a wee bit. Can you can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, we are branching out a little bit more. So it is doing really well. We got great support from the Irish wrestling scene when we did launch, um, and we're we're coming back to back off solo shows in Cork, and we're we're we 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 will be sold out for the keynotes out for those two shows. The tickets are going really well. But one thing that I want to do. I want to have fun, right? I mean, I'm nearly, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm a middle-aged wrestling wrestler that's that's still rooted in the in the, in the attitude era, right? And and old school, good WCW and old school WWE. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm setting a, I'm starting a Phoenix Extreme brand, and I'm going to do it kind of in an underground feel and an underground vibe, right? Mm. Um. Completely, it'll go. It'll look completely different. I have a different ring. I have different color ring, for example. I have different commentators. I have different lighting. I have different roster to a certain degree. Um, and every single match is going to be kind of Phoenix Extreme Rules, right? For the first show, um, I'd have session Got Martina versus uh, <laughs> Jay Money for the hardcore, hard nor hard knocks hardcore division. Um, I'd have Steve Savage versus Rory Coyle. Uh, from the Brothers Ulaid from the UK wrestling on TNT I have two guys from ICW coming back two, two friends of the sh- friends of the family the old school Cork family you know you know DCT you know Luke, Luke King Sharp from, uh, from from your from your CCW days and um, DCT is a former ICW heavyweight champ and I'm going to mix them in with some people that you mightn't or might not have seen in Phoenix shows but are going to be kind of split roster if you know what I mean so and I'm going to be wrestling on this because I love this stuff so um, that's what that's kind of that's my new venture um, that I'm really excited about because the other the other side of things is I'm not saying it's going to run itself because it's not but it's, it's in a great place mm. so what do you do when you're in a great place do you, do, you, do you stay stagnant or do you try and do something new or do you try something in conjunction with it? And what I want to do is do something in conjunction with it. So I'm going to do this primarily in Limerick um, because I think Limerick's prime for it. It's a gritty city and we've got yeah. Steve Savage there. We've got Sean Dunn there. We've got a couple of, we've got our school there. We've got a couple of guys coming up uh, who, who are kind of really suited to that type of vibe. So um, August 27th, um, Phoenix Extreme presents no, no Retreat, No Surrender. So there you go. That's an exclusive for you. Unreal. Unreal. That's a uh, pretty cool. I'd say I, uh, uh, listeners of the show and uh, Martin as well will, will know that like I'm a huge fan of hardcore wrestling. Like we love our hardcore wrestling. Come here. on the way down to me. Come on the way down to me in August. V- I'll put you front row VIPs. Just okay. grab a bag, grab a bag of cans. Come on the right. way down. Let's do it. All right. There you go. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That no a good problem. night. That'll be our first live stream there. Will it? Okay, yeah, we can do that. We can make that happen, man. <laughs> we can actually absolutely 100% because, uh, there's nothing more than I enjoy. Well, I love wrestling in general, but good hardcore wrestling or even fun hardcore wrestling is. Yeah. Fun. So, yeah, man, I love Limerick as well. It's a great city. I could, I don't think you could have picked a better city than Limerick to do that. Absolutely agree with you. Yeah, absolutely agree. Oh man, that's um, made my night right there. <laughs> one, uh, one of the other things I noticed these are doing, uh, Bedsy. Uh, so obviously, one of the big things that really hit independent wrestling around the world um, the past couple of years was the speaking out movement, mm. um, and I noticed that. Uh, 
Phoenix is now doing a kind of a women only training session. Yep. Um, and I was wondering, like, firstly, how did that come about? And secondly, more broadly, what's the reception to women? Um, you know, are, are you finding more women are getting involved in wrestling or there are more women fans or is it still largely, uh, largely yeah. <laughs> a male fan base? Still largely a male fan base, unfortunately, but the tide is turning a little bit, right? Um, mm. I think it's a kind of, um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, that's a real good question, to be fair. Is it, like I was at a show tonight, there, it, there was a mix, but it's primarily, it's still a primarily male dominated industry, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, we as promoters have a responsibility, and we as gym owners have a responsibility to try and change that. Mm. We can either and aside from speaking out, which I'll come to in a second, we can either go, all right, well, it's about it just it, have beers with the boys and pop the boys and all that kind of, but that's male toxicity to a, the worst ever level, you know? Now, I haven't, st- un- for, or sorry, fortunately, I haven't, I never really saw that an, an awful lot of that in my days in wrestling. I think a lot of that, in, especially in Ireland, was probably before my time. However, yeah. we have, there was a, there was a, uh, there was a, ma- there was a point in time only a couple of months ago where there was two women's matches in the country the same day, right? One was in NLW, one was in Titanic. And between the two of them, every single woman wrestler in Ireland was wrestling, right? There was nobody else bar Katie Harvey, who's on maternity leave, and Eva Valkyrie, who is signed with WWE, and she's out with her knee. Apart from that, nobody else. Not a trainee. Not like, yeah, that's it, right? That's wrong. That's wrong. That's, I mean, the, that's, that's wrong. The, the, yeah. the gender balance in wrestling is, is ridiculous. So how it came about was the... Um, how it came about was... Uh, the, the, the wrestling with the squad, as we call it, is um, I approached um, I approached Debbie Kaitel and Justy just after Christmas. I went down to Kildare with a good chat, and I was like, "Look, I lo- I want to do something about this, and I want to do it in conjunction with you guys, and I want to do it in conjunction with the Fight Factory." And then we had a chat with Katie Harvey, who was more than accommodating as well. So we said, "Right, well, what are we going to do?" I mean, it's going it, it, to. I'm prepared to to try and see will this work uh, for 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 maybe a year. I'm prepared to maybe. You know, I mean, is it is it a commercial thing? No, because it's not going to make us money. However, we we really need to do our due diligence and try and promote wrestling. To, that is for it is actually for everybody. Mm-hmm. So it kind of it kind of expanded then to um, to um, include like and it's, as it was always meant to be. But I mean, we got we got um we got our wording uh, signed off from somebody who kind of is in the know, uh, Rhea Ripley over in the UK, um, to make sure that we were being as inclusive as we could, even with our messaging. Because, I mean, you only get a chance to do something right the first time. So we, we, it's not woman-only wrestling, because that's not, that's not the whole point. Because it's, it's, it's not you don't say men-only wrestling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's, a, it's, it's a safe environment for wrestling. And one of the, one of the um, our first night, we had two girls, and we have a, a trans girl, right? And... I'm delighted to say that the, the one of those girls, Willow, um, the the it will be refereeing one of our matches tomorrow. Now she's she's one of the trans girls who mm. um, she's a trans lady who's a um, she had a little bit of training in Amsterdam a few years ago, and she's a mad wrestling fan. And she's she wouldn't have she wouldn't have come back to wrestling except for this idea. And Unreal. she came to this training session once, and she's been training with everybody else in Phoenix ever since, and she hasn't missed a training session yet. Amazing. And she's not she, like she's not nowhere near ready for shows. However, mm. she's ready to do a bit of refereeing for me tomorrow. And that to me is, that's a great, like, that's a very satisfying thing to have happened in a short space of time. Um, the Fight Factory had their first session the other day. They had six, uh, six girls. Again, some, some of them would, be, would have been way too conscious to have went in with the boys mm. uh, at the start. I'm not for segregation in wrestling, however, but I know at the start, we do need to do our due diligence. Um, yeah. when, when people are more comfortable, then they can join the open class Um and that kind of stuff. It's a hard thing to do is knock in a wrestling studio or a wrestling class the first day and walk in if you're even if you're a 35 year old man like me. Um, I mean, that's it, it, you know. But what I will say is, you know, it, it's the same with everything. The hardest part is kind of walking in. So day one. It, I have to say, uh, hats go off, man, because that's that's something that hasn't been done enough to create that yep. kind of environment. And it's mad, like, I know it's not the same thing, but it feels very much like the metal scene in mm. everywhere. Where it's the same kind of thing, the same problems that you say. It's kind yep. of a boys' club, blah blah blah. So that's wild, man. Like it's really cool. Again, hats off. It's yep. uh, it's super cool. It really is. It's great. Well, I think you need to use your influence 
and influence it was what we have. There's four wrestling schools in the country, you know, yeah. um, but maybe five or a couple of other ones, but there's not that many. And as promoters, I mean, there's not that many promotions and wrestling schools at the same time. Mm. What are we going to do? Are we going to try and do something about it? Or are we just going to accept the status quo? And um, I've small that- niece, I've small nieces and I see them in, in women's sport, even mm. in mainstream women's sport, and they're not getting a lick yeah. of, uh, of attention or money or funding. And, wrestling isn't even wrestling in general doesn't get that so you imagine how far down the spectrum did this actual issue it really is female so. women's wrestling in the independent yeah it's probably like completely down but dude that has to, that kind of stuff has to come from the top down yeah absolutely and it is amazing yeah. that you guys are doing that because like look i i've been a huge women's wrestling fan for years um mm. <laughs> that's why i love tna so much back in the day because the only way you saw it, you know um exactly. and now only past what four or five years we're getting it in the mainstream with, with Becky really. Yep. You know, I, I think Dara, it, really, forward, so. it really hit me just how little attention it gets when Becky was in the, uh, the main event of WrestleMania in front of 70 odd thousand people, like a born and bred, a, a Limerick girl, um, born and bred, uh, performing on the biggest stage possible. And if you were to look at the Irish media that mm-hmm. whole week, you wouldn't have known what was happening. Mm. But I have to say something, um, you know, on this network, uh, obviously the True Penny Network, um, James True Penny, I always do shows with him where he picks out the best uh, wrestling from Japan, which is all the Yoshi wrestling. Uh-huh. And that gave me a whole new insight into, yeah, everywhere except for the Western world that does wrestling has yeah. this huge female scene, particularly in Japan with, with the with and that, that, that wrestling is some of the best wrestling I've ever seen in my life. Yet, when you transport it over to the West, it's like it didn't get yeah. looked in until a couple of years ago. So, I mean, fans of this show on the network, when they're listening to it, they're, they've they been exposed to this stuff from Japan. But, you know, it's great to hear that we're, we're breeding it oh. here in Ireland ourselves. Fair play. Yeah, well, we are, we are trying, you know, and I think it's 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 it's, it's going to <clears> keep going up and up. So, and, and the, main, the, the, the great thing about it is, we're doing it in conjunction with another wrestling school as well. And, and, and mm. fight factory are to me, they're the, they're the benchmark in wrestling schools. You know, they've, they've produced, they've, they've produced your Jordan Devlin's they've yeah. produced your LJ Clary's they've produced your Sammy D's and your Justy's and your, your Finn Balor's that's, that's them. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. they're the blue, they're the blueprint and host and they train people, not only in wrestling, I think they train people in how to be people as well. Like, I mean, that, it's it's not a coincidence that the, ma- the majority of the guys that come down from to, to into my show that from outside of Phoenix are Fight Factory guys, you know. Yeah, but so Betsy, has, the culture is important. 100%. So Betsy, you're 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 out wrestling, you're traveling the country wrestling, you're training new wrestlers, you're running a wrestling promotion. See when you get in in the evening and you're just love, looking to relax, do you put on wrestling or do you like a, <laughs> do you like a break from it or or what? I put on wrestling. Uh, no, I don't put on wrestling when I go home. Um, I watch wrestling when I have a week's holidays or if I know I have a few days to do nothing. Do you know what I mean? Right. If I have an hour or two to do nothing, the last thing I'm doing is watching wrestling. Um, I won't like to. And that's why I don't really keep up the product anymore because um, I have enough of wrestling in my life to keep me going. Um, yeah. Cause I'm at, I'm at so many shows and I, I watch tapes over and over. And when people, people send me matches all the time uh, to watch and people are looking to get booked and stuff. So, and I always like, to, I always like to give people a fair crack. If somebody sends me something, I'd have the respect to them. So I'll watch the, what, at least one or two of their matches. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> and when I do watch wrestling, I won't like to, I ain't watching the, what's going on now. I'm like, fit that I'm going right Starcade let's have a lash let's go back let's I mean, go back and I'll pick up a moment in time and I go right I'm going to watch five months and I might spend a week binging that five months the last one last time I did it I, I was like I think it was um, it was 97 at WCW and right I'm going to watch all the nitros all the, the pay-per-views this is where I'm at and that that's that's binge. And even though I'm working from home, I'd be like, right. If in between meetings, I'm like, right, <laughs> yeah. bang, watching some of this. You know what I mean? So I I'm, kind of I kind of binge it to a point, you know. I mean, look, that's a better way. And look, that's better for the mental health too. Because be honest with you, the current product, the exception of AEW, you're missing nothing. Oh, I love AEW. You're love missing, it. yeah. But I mean, from 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 the other one, you're missing nothing. Yeah, Just I know. absolute garbage. Mm. Um, but come here to me. Um, it's interesting that I just want to go, kind of go back a bit. He started in Cork, yep, and then moved to Limerick. Now, what I'm quite familiar with both cities, um, and they're both great cities. What 
was there a difference when you moved? Like, what was it like a different? Because I know the core crowd can be a bit ra- ravenous, but so are the, the Limerick crowd in different ways. Yeah. With, was there that difference between the jump or was it just, look, it's, it's too expensive. We have to go to Limerick because that's when yeah. you, you kind of just touched over a bit. We had to go to Limerick because there was nowhere else to go, basically, really? um, in relation to the school, the, the, the school. I mean, we're, we're still run shows in Cork um, mm. and we probably run more shows in Cork than we do in Limerick right. because... The, the, the draw is in Cork for us. Phoenix Wrestling is a Cork promotion. Okay. Um, and Cork fans are ravenous for it. Limerick, mm. it's up and down a little bit. And that's why we're doing, when we're trying this new venture, we're trying it in Limerick. Cause it's like, mm, oh, so it's going to be primarily, so your yeah. your main base is still going to be a Cork, but this, uh, yeah, that makes sense. That's, yeah, that's my, my school is in Limerick from a training perspective, but mm. my promotion and my heart is in Cork. Um, because... Like we have the venues in Cork, we have more of a yeah. crowd. We've we've a bigger draw in, in Cork. It's a fact. I mean, we have they they never left us. They were loyal to me, and I it broke my heart. I swear to God, I gave I, mean, I gave an interview last year. I was on the radio and everything, trying to like talk to TDs. The the uh, and I went to a teacher of mine was um, a Fine Gael TD, and he, he was there. Oh, I got on the phone. I'll, he was I, he was on the radio saying he'll sort this out. I was like, go away from me, liar. <laughs> but um, I won't get into that. We could start and we could do another podcast on that. However, I was very emotional at the time because I I felt I left the people of Cork down a little bit mm. um, by moving. Well, but you know. well, it's funny, man. A lot of my friends in Cork actually know the product. So they're probably listening to the show and it, it's, you know, they're, they're, you still left that impact there anyway. So I don't think anyone felt abandoned. Yeah, it was just at the time when I was like, I took down the ring of my own and I loaded into a van of my own last August and I drove up to Limerick on my own. It was a very emotional thing to do, you know what I mean? And I wasn't, yeah. I'm not saying it was a bad emotion. It was just an emotional thing to do. I guess. You know? I mean, I get, I, you could hear every bit of steel banging. And then, and like, there was no music. It was just this, this big empty place. I was like, what the hell? What's going on? But, um, yeah, but look, knowing me, um, Martin, you know I'm a pretty stubborn, pig-headed guy. I was <laughs> like, this won't be the last thing, way. Steve, Billy Redlam. You know, we're just going to move <laughs> and, re, like, just reevaluate a few things. And then we're back in Cork, and uh, we got the Kino back, which is a massive, massive step for us back. To, there's Kino, which is the venue that we've, tr- we've thrived in. We weren't in it for the last two years because they changed owners and the, the owners didn't want wrestling in it, but the new managers do. Mm. Um, so we've signed for two, two, two shows in the summer, summer in the Kino, June and July. Unreal. I can't I can't wait. I actually might be the first one through the curtain in June. I want to get the path. Yeah, I want to get the path. I'm selfish. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, it's all good. Um, just one thing. Right. So if I'm wrong, it, the product basically is alive. You don't do any videos. You don't do any VOD or anything like that. Is that, is that going to be something down the pipeline or is it like, now come to the shows and, no, we do record it, Jeff. No, we, we do, do record, record it. Um, it's up, like, I have VOD from the old stuff, but right. um, since after COVID, I've put it, I'm putting it all up on YouTube. Oh, right, right, so, right. right. So our, last four, that, yeah. our last four or five shows are all new YouTube free to watch for anyone. Um, and, you, and you wouldn't be interested in doing the streaming or going across that way or charging for it? Or are you happy enough just to have it up on YouTube? Yeah, for we're, too, we're too small. Yeah, the exposure. I prefer exposure. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're too small to be t- charging, really. Now, when we do the hardcore gimmick, I'll put a small price on that because um, I don't want that falling into the wrong hands. When I say the wrong yeah. hands, I don't I want to. I want kids watching it on YouTube and then me getting heat for it. You know what I mean? No, that's fair. So I'm that's like, fair. no, it's, it'll be behind the, the Patreon wall, but it'll be like two euro to watch the show. Like it's not going to be, no one's going to be making made me millionaires up because of it. But yeah. um, it's going to be a certain, it'll be a different level of, you know, uh, of that. St- I, I can't wait. I, I can't it, wait for that. But yeah, You've talked about uh, COVID a few times, Bedsy, and wrestling kind of fell between two stools in COVID because it wasn't sort of arts and theatre and it wasn't sports and it, it kind of fell like it, it didn't really end up getting funding or supportive either. Mm. Like, what was the experience of being a not just a wrestler, but a wrestling promoter during that period? Bonkers, to be honest with you. Um, hindsight is a great thing. I probably wouldn't have, I certainly wouldn't have opened a bigger school in the middle of it. Um, when we were going through this whole phase opening, remember that? Back before the second wave stuff in us. We were all, yeah, phase one, phase two, phase three, yeah, back to normal. So I started booking. I was, I, was, I was guilty of being enthusiastic. My biggest problem was that I was probably outwardly 
emotion of uh, sharing my emotions that I was feeling inwards. And that was true. The second I heard that we could do something, I was on Twitter booking a show. I shouldn't have probably done that. Like, cause it gives me and everyone's felt false hope. And then you got to cancel it and it's like, oh, so probably very guilty of over enthusiasm in that respect. But I think nobody can be guilty of anything during that period of time because it was such a weird time. You know, uh, uh, it was, it was really bad. Um, but it was, it was, um, it was hard. It was hard financially as well, you know, because I was having to pay rent month in, month out. Now we were, some of the trainees were, were kind of donating a little bit to that as well, but primarily it's on me. And I still, I, I have, I'll be paying off that gym for the next three years, every month. Um, oh. So I wouldn't have done that if I'd known in hindsight, to be fair. You know, but um, we it is what it is. I mean, we, we it brought some of us really close together. Um, I would like to say that myself and Owen Richards are probably best friends at this point. I spoke to him every day in the last two years. Right. You know, um, be, be just just shooting the breeze every day. He got me out of some dark times. I got him out of some dark times. You know, it's it's just communities have come together in, in yeah. wrestling as well, and we've we've formed this kind of stable bond. I think. And hence you see all these wrestling promotions are working together post COVID, whereas pre COVID probably wouldn't. Everyone was like always saying, hashtag sport Irish wrestling. Will we work with each other? No. Do you know? <laughs> but, you know, it was a fact. Oh like, my God. It, I, I, look, I, I, yeah, that's wild, but also not. It's, it just seems that was, you know what? It seems that was the way Ireland was before COVID in all its mm. artistic ways. It was like, no. We're in our own little fiefdom, and then you realize no, we're all in together. And it seems yeah. like that's what you guys have done. You've you've managed to like unite where it's like one solid product that goes through the whole country, yeah. north and south as well. Which is, you yeah. know, uh, listeners here in you know who are listening to this in the states probably don't realize that doesn't happen very often. North and south don't really work together that much. No, never happened. It never um, happens. Never happened. Surprisingly. In 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 wrestling terms, especially, never happened. I mean, we did a whole gimmick there for the last nine months where Phoenix and Titanic Wrestling were feuding, right? You know, in, invading each other's shows and all this kind of stuff. And must say, a big shout out to JDP, who's the the, the booker up in uh, Titanic. He's a mm. hell hell of a hell of a nice guy. You get on so well with him, and they're all at the great crew, Carvel as well, the champ up there, great guy. Um, we wouldn't have been we wouldn't have been working with the same level of cohesion, but there's guys, there's guys that come uh, in fairness. It's not just, I'm not, I'm not taking credit for this, by the way. Um, there's people from Phoenix, traditional Phoenix wrestlers that are going up to train the fight factory. Right. Uh, week in, week out. Um, and, uh, and getting exposed there as well. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not just, a, it's not one person driving it. It's just organically the way it's kind of formed. Yeah. Post COVID. Whereas, the the BS is gone. I mean, there's no no one no one has room in their lives for it anymore. You know. Well, that's I mean? it. It can be taken away like that. You know. Mm. And I think that's one thing yeah. that anyone involved in anything live or particularly small communities like the wrestling community, which is small anyway. Yeah. And then the independent community is even more so. So that's great to hear, man. In the five minutes we have left, I have two questions for you. One, oh. who should we who should we be watching in Irish wrestling? Who who are who are the big names that we should be you know checking out or you know uh, listeners to the show who've never who aren't familiar with it and two what would you like to plug okay so Irish wrestlers um, check out Steve Savage right he's a hell of a guy he's about to blow up he's about to make his um, OTT debut in Limerick in a couple of weeks time that's not going to be the this, this, that, that's not going to be the end of his journey he's going to he's, he can go big time um, recently of, fought in the US didn't he yeah he just last week yeah and 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 recently got engaged Steve if you're listening congratulations um <laughs> I think LJ Cleary is a star. He's going to go at WWE or AEW at some point in the next couple of years. Um, obviously, uh, obviously, plugging some of my own people. Anita Vaughn is a star. She's the Phoenix Empress champion right now. I think you'll see her all over the place and on OTT as well in the next 12 months. And if not, Joe, what are you thinking? Look at her. She's money. Um, there's too many people to, t- to name in Irish wrestling because I think everyone is fantastic. But genuinely, if people are in, in Dublin, check out OTT, check out Fight Factory. If you're up the north, check out Titanic. If you're down south, check out Phoenix Wrestling. Um, uh, and if you're in, in Limerick, which you two guys are going to be, plug, sure. plug, plug. The Phoenix Extreme presents No Retreat, No Surrender, August 27th. It's some old school, down and dirty, hardcore wrestling. No one is going to do this in Ireland right now. And I'm certainly going to be the one to embrace it. So that's it. Well, man, we appreciate it, guys. What we're going to have links to all that stuff. We're going to be uh, pushing that show really hard coming into August. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, Billy Bedlam. It's been an absolute pleasure. 
My pleasure, lads. Thank You're more than welcome on the show anytime you want. Hey, if you want to want, cover a WCW show with us, we'd love to do that too. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> that'd, I'm be in. Good, that'd be a good crack. Uh, but yeah, guys, again, um, if you want to check us out, you can. Phoenix 92.5 FM, TheWrestlingRewind.com. And we will talk to you next week here on the show. Thanks, guys. Cheers, up. Cheers boys. You have nothing else to do on a Saturday. If you like nerd things, now check out Nerd to Know Basis here on Phoenix 92.5 FM, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then head over to nerdtoknowmedia.com for all of our shows as part of the Nerd to Know Media radio network. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production.